All right, it is push week. Congratulations on bringing in the new year with another great affix set. So last week was Fortified Afflicted Raging. It was okay. I mean, I think that Raging has some problems in specific spots. We'll probably talk about a little, a bit, a few of those. Afflicted has some problems depending on your composition, but overall, not a terrible Fortified week. However, this week. And honestly, next week are probably two of the best push weeks that are you're going to find consecutively. This week is Tyrannical Volcanic Sanguine. Next week is Fortified Storming Bursting. And so for this week, this Tyrannical week is insane. And uh, Volcanic and Sanguine have minimal amounts of time losses that you can incur. Of course, there are some that you can incur via Sanguine. I think that whenever you look at dungeons specifically, you know, there are some time losses that you might take. Like if the trash pack dies, not in a straightforward fashion, or you don't get a good knock in Throne of the Tides, you might be able to heal the Sentinel up to full. Um, in Darkheart Thicket, there's the first pull of the dungeon where you might heal the bear. And Rise, there's all the mini-bosses where if you don't move like the mages out from beneath them, I know the Maiden is definitely a mob that can get stuck easily inside of Sanguine. Uh, the first pull of Black or Cold is a bit annoying to deal with on Sanguine, if you, unless you get a good knock as well. But overall... Sanguine and Volcanic should be a much easier affix set than at least what we were playing this week with Afflicted Raging, right? Affl Raging, I would say, is a much harder affix. Um, now, they did change Sanguine coming into this patch. So, for those who don't know, you can no longer get multiple stacks of Sanguine. Basically, before, you know, if you killed five mobs, they would drop five puddles of Sanguine, and that would heal a mob for 25% of his HP per tick. Now, the Sanguine is locked at one stack permanently, and it will only heal it for 5% of their maximum health every one second. You can... Uh, lower this a little bit with some Mortal Strike effects. Maybe if you're not playing like a super high key, instead of Defensive Dance on a Demon Hunter, you can play Mortal Dance on a Demon Hunter. If you have an MS from, I don't even know, an Arms Warrior, uh, from a Windwalker Monk, say you're playing with the Demonology Warlock, you're, you're going to get one of those passively. An MS is okay if you can somehow fit it in, but it's obviously not required. Having good knockbacks is, is going to be the most important thing. Specifically on those pulls that I was talking about, making sure that you're kiting the mobs well and mitigating the amount of sanguine healing is going to be a huge deal. Now, this most recent week, um, I don't think that was something, I don't think that there was anything that was too uncommon here. Throne of the Tides, uh, obviously incredibly, incredibly challenging to be able to complete. Um, I think on Raging in general, this, this dungeon was just really hard. The Witches and the Oracles, if you didn't get perfect soothes via Aug Evoker, you were going to be in a problem. A lot of problems. Additionally, Aug Evoker was required for a lot of dungeons. On Raging, it probably always will be. Um, and it, Raging just kind of opened you up to a lot of issues. Afflicted a couple of times would cause problems. Black or Cold Assault Azar and Galakron's Fall all taking S tier, at least on subcreation, for ease of dungeons. I'm not shocked. I don't think anybody's necessarily shocked. These three keys have ge very generous timers to the point where you can have 10, 15, sometimes even 20 deaths and still be able to time the key. Uh, and so, you know, the, the kind of tone of the season is Black or Cold, Atal Dazar, and Fall. Very, very easy compared to some of the other keys. Wakerest, Manor, Darkheart, Thicket, and Everbloom have, I would describe, generous timers. But, like, you can still, like, mess them up and wipe in a way that can deplete your key. Uh, Throne of the Tides has an okay timer, but you get pun punished for runbacks pretty heavily. And so anytime you have a bunch of deaths, or like multiple deaths, the key's kind of bricked, plus it has like really hard trash. And then Rise is the hardest key of the season, still. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in seeing if there's going to be any class tuning or dungeon tuning. Now, Blizzard probably should be back in the office about this time, right? Uh, they were gone for the holidays. I, I suspect that they might be in the back in the office. Now, there's a question as to whether or not they're going to be working on next season or if they're going to hit us with any class or dungeon tuning. For me, if I'm looking at dungeon tuning, I'm thinking about removing on death affixes for um, Everbloom is maybe something that's like a quick fix. Uh, not from Everbloom in general, but just like from the Lashers. Additionally, the Dogs in Wakers Manor. Maybe giving us a bit more time in Rise again. The timer in Rise is fundamentally the problem with that dungeon. Uh, there, There is... I don't love how that dungeon is played. That's not necessarily in the scope of the video. I think that if you, if you gave two more minutes to that key, it's probably better. Maybe even like a minute and a half. If you hit it with like a, <laughs> the old Azure Vault special where you actually give it 130 that probably puts you in a better spot to be able to actually time that key a bit more consistently. Because right now it's done at much lower levels than the other dungeons. So you see keys being done at 31. And uh, Rise is being done at 29 still. But there's only two 29s of that being done. 
and then on, most of them are 28s. And funnily enough, there's a lot of 28s from bolstering fortified whenever you could actually cheese tier and you could get a bunch of time back. Um, and so I think that, that I think that a minute and a half would probably help with uh, parity of difficulty in regards to rise in general. Okay, so some of the stuff that we're seeing on Tyrannical and kind of just seeing the progression over the course of the season. Aug Invokers are playing uh, this Leaf of the Ancient Protectors trinket pretty regularly. Basically what this does is it allows you to put a shield on to other players. It's about a 400,000 health shield. It's about like 380k, um, I think, from memory. And you, you get the shield every minute. Whenever it breaks, it gives versatility. I want to say it's about... 12% damage, about 6% defen like defensive value from the versatility. And you see you know, a decent amount of augs playing it. Not Big Birdo in this instance, but uh, it is played by a lot of augs. In addition to that, they are playing sometimes playing Phyraxian to Rage Heart. A lot of melee DPS are also starting to adapt and play this Phyraxian to Rage Heart. It gives you just a massive shield, and it, it allows you to just kind of have another defensive tool in your arsenal whenever you are looking for something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, people are starting to elect to play a bit more defensive-minded trinkets. I suspect that this is going to kind of continue in the tyrannical affix set. Uh, this allows the Aug Evoker to not only keep themselves safe, but to kind of keep other people safe. In addition to that, whenever you have, you know, not only just the tanks, but also other people, the healers or Aug Evokers alike, playing these uh, shield trinkets. Shields are actually quite good on some specific pulls. For example, these Rook Spiderlings in Black or Cold, whenever they auto-attack your tank and their tank has a shield on them, they actually can't get the debuff. So, you know, putting the Leaf on them or popping Wall of Hate as you're grouping as a tank is kind of nice. In addition to that, it also happens in both Rise and Fall with these Time Stream Anomalies. Their Bloom Cast, uh, Bloom Cast, whenever it gets applied, if you actually have an Absorb on you whenever the Bloom is going to be applied, it will then no longer be applied. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all that we were kind of expecting to see this week in Mythic Plus. Overall, we could kind of talk about Raging for a little bit. I think that Raging, and on, uh, I made a video about Afflicted yesterday, but I want to talk about Raging for a little bit. Raging makes Aug Evoker mandatory in a way that I don't think is like super productive and super healthy. I think that there were definitely a decent amount of pulls that Raging was... A fair amount over the top, especially in some instances. I can think of a lot of times in Waycrest Manor, especially once you make it to this lower area where you have like these soul essences. A lot of people aren't pulling soul essences this season, but soul essences in general, especially whenever they get that raging threshold, uh, become a lot more difficult to deal with. So you're forced to soothe. You know, throwing the ties. There was a reason that it was down in that that D tier when on that on that sub creation list that we were looking at earlier, and it's because the oracles and the witches. Unless you get like a near perfect soothe, is going to be a problem. The first pull. Of Black or Cold Hall also had this issue where if you didn't get a perfect soothe on both the counselors and the retainers, you know, you weren't able to stop Soul Blade. You didn't have necessarily enough kicks for Soul Blast. And so Raging actually ended up causing a lot of problems. I think that if it were me, I don't think Raging needs to be removed. I've always been an advocate of the Raging gets removed by the first CC that is applied to the mob effect. Um, and so they're like immune to the first stun. And so say you Chaos Nova into Raging, Raging is then removed. So then if you have another Demon Hunter, they can immediately Chaos Nova on top of your previous one. Or like say you throw a Sigil of Misery, that removes the... That will end up removing the Raging and then you can Chaos Nova on top of that. I think that that would maybe be a bit more healthy for Raging as opposed to the casual. You're forced to bring a Math Soothe uh, from overall. You know, that, that kind of situation. Those are kind of my thoughts on, you know, where Raging was annoying. Uh, but this week, it should be a lot more tame. Tyrannical is obviously the hardest part of this, making sure that you live bosses and uh, work on the dungeons just themselves is going to be in your best bet. Again, I, I kind of expect the dungeons to roughly line up like this. I think that Throne of the Tides is probably going to be moved up a hair. I think that this dungeon is... As long as you're not getting one shot by the first boss due to the Focus Lightning, it's okay. Um, for Rise, it's still going to probably be the hardest key, especially in Tyrannical. But Black or Cold Atal is our fall. Those are all going to be the easiest keys to be able to time at the highest levels. So, anyways, we'll be back next week. Again, probably going to be push week again next week. So we're probably going to be having a similar conversation about how Storming and Bursting are pretty easy and how Disc Priest is actually quite good. Probably the best healer for Bursting, but uh, Mr. Weird Monk is also good. Anyways, we shall see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>